Hey pilots, Soldier Hobbs here again, bringing you the Berserker mech. Alright, this is going to be our first look at the A-Class mechs, or the light mechs in the game. Uh, just pause here if you want to take a look at the mech stats on your own, I, so I don't have to bore you with all the details. But yeah, I'd say if, this, if you get a light mech, this is the one you should check out first, because a lot of what the Berserker, how, how the Berserker play, the Berserker, the Berserker, the Berserker, how, how it plays is a, a lot of it will transfer to a lot of the other light mechs, so, alright. Aside from bad word stumbles, let's get moving. Okay, so the weapons on this thing uh, that comes standard is the submachine cannon and the tow rocket. So I'm, you're pretty familiar with this if you've already played the assault. And the ability, the the, the, ability, the ability is called uh, ballistic barrage. And again, I'll get into more detail about that. But since this is probably your first light mech, and this is the first light mech video I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna kind of go on how to do the light mechs. Now, the light mechs, yes. They're as their name implies. They're a lot lighter than all the other mechs in the game. So you're gonna want to be a little bit careful when you play this mech. You just you don't want to try and ramble it like you see a lot of other people do, or like how you would in an assault mech. That, that'll probably get you killed. Light mechs are very very good at flanking, and yeah, try, you want to try to surprise people in a light mech more so than try to take them head on. And, but the light mechs also excel at chasing people because they are very fast, they're very nimble. And that's the thing. Mobility is the key here. You gotta be fast and nimble in these things. You can't just stand out in the open, otherwise you're just gonna die instantly. These light mechs, the standard, they have usually less than 400. They all actually have less than 400 armor, so you have to be very, very careful when you play them. Now, that being said, you're probably wondering why the hell are the mechs are these mechs in this game? If they're so squishy, you know, they die so easily, why even bother with them? Well, the key with them is they are light, but they can punch just as hard as some of the other heavier mechs. The thing about these are they are glass cannons, and by that definition means they can still put out quite a bit of damage, but in order to be able to do that, you can't get shot. So, the whole concept here is that these things are light, they're mobile, they're very fast, they can get around quickly, and they can do, and they can still pump out damage. However, they are punishing if you make a mistake. I mean, in like a medium mech, you can probably make a couple mistakes, take a couple of rockets by accident, and you might still be able to, you know, uh, get a victory, and you might be able to finish off your opponent, but no. In a light mech, if you take a single tow rocket, you're pretty much screwed right from the beginning. It's very, very punishing if you mess up inside of a light mech. However, even though it's punishing if you mess up, when you play it right, it's very rewarding because these things have a much faster dodge cooldown. They can literally dodge ev once every second instead of once every 1.2 seconds like the medium mechs can. And so your reward is much more mobility over, you know, just general armor. Like I said, it's basically you have less... You have less room for error, but, you know, you can still, but it's a bit more rewarding because of that. Now, as far as weapons, you, it's the SMC and the tow rocket. I mean, you're pretty familiar with these weapons already, especially if you've played the Assault, so it's nothing really new, so I don't really have to go over how to use them. And so, I can just give you, like, base, the general strategy for the Berserker. Now, the Berserker definitely does a little bit better inside of closer ranges because, you know, the nature of the SMC and the tow rocket. Well, the tow rocket can be kind of used at medium range if you know how to correctly lead your targets and you remember the airburst, remember that airburst, people. It's middle mouse or just hitting right mouse again after you shot a rocket. It, most new guys forget about it and it's one of the most important things to remember about the tow rocket. But, uh, let's see. But yeah, the, this thing does do good very well in close range combat. It even says in the description it's a sustained skirmisher, so if you're inside of a, an intense fight for a while, it can definitely last you a good long time. You just, you know, just keep your, just try to keep your reticle on, dodge whenever you can, uh, try to dodge rockets and predict, a good, a good thing to predict people when they're gonna shoot a rocket is just count to three, is just count to about three, that's usually when people, will, after they shoot one rocket, you can count to about three, and that's about when they're gonna shoot another rocket, so yeah, just learn how to, try to predict when people are gonna shoot a tow rocket, and that's when you should dodge, because the, the tow rockets are what's gonna kill you the most, the inside of a light mech. So you want to learn how to dodge those most, but uh, I want to move on to the ability. The clip's going to switch out here pretty soon. And yeah, but a bit more on the strategy, but let's get on to the ability. Now the ability is called Ballistics Barrage, and what it does is that it increases your weapon damage for about 5 seconds. It increases it by 15%. Now, how you want to use this ability is generally... I wouldn't use it like 
the first, like when you first see an enemy, don't try to use it. Use it when you feel like you need that extra edge in order to be able to survive the fight. Usually I'll do it if in case like I have to engage a heavy. Uh, I'll engage it and I'll, I'll pop it and then try to, you know, do as much damage as I can. And you and then once I pop it, the first thing you want to do is shoot a tow rocket because you only have five seconds. And then if you the first thing you shoot is your tow rocket, those will do the most damage out of all your other weapons aside from even with like the bulk end and the assault rifle which I'll show later on. The tow rocket is what will really break out the damage. And also a good thing I like to do too is that I'll sneak up behind my en the enemy team and then once I get find a good position and I'm right behind them, I'll pop my ability and just do as much damage as quickly as I can. And so that's how I use the ability. I don't don't use it just like every now and then just to kill simple people because that's not the best way to utilize it. But yeah, uh, anyways, we're going to move onward to showcase the next weapon. Okay, now, here's the Assault Rifle. And so, the Assault Rifle functions on the Berserker is pretty much how it would function, kind of like on the Assault. It, it gives you a bit more range than it normally would have. So you can be an effective Berserker from kind of a medium range, which is not a bad idea, because it is a light mech, you're not going to want to be in close and inside the danger zone as much as much uh, inside of a light mech. It kind of helps with that, but you know, it, if you stay at a long range, it does make, you know, ha you having to be able to lead your tow rockets, but hey, it's still a very, very good option for the Berserker, especially if you want to be able to just, you know, lay out a bit more damage at a bit more range, if that's your preferred playstyle. Just remember, all the weapons in the game, they're not supposed to be upgrades, they're just different options as far as playstyle is concerned. But like I said, you can see me here keeping a bit more range than I did in the previous video using this rifle, so just just remember that. And so yeah, using the assault rifle on the Berserker doesn't require too much of an adjustment to play style. Just just remember, it's not as effect as effective as the SMC or the Vulcan up close, but at medium range is where it really really shines. Just remember that, that, that about the sorry, assault rifle, and also. On this mech, you're going to want to be a bit more cautious about your heat because unlike the assault mech, it does not have weapons cooling. So, uh, you don't get that, you know, you, you can't just get rid of all that heat. You have to wait that three seconds in order for all your heat to go away. And, it, and uh, how this really ties in is if you use your ability and you overheat while you're still using that ability, you waste it. A good amount of your ability. You do not want to overheat when you use the ability. If anything, I always try to make sure that when I activate this ability, that I don't have any heat built up, or I'm, you know, I'm being very, very careful with my heat meter, especially if I fire the ability and it's up. So that's one thing you want to be aware of: is heat on this thing. You, you don't want to overheat and preserve it. I mean, it's not nearly as bad as the assault. I mean, I think the, the overheat time is only about four seconds, but still. Your ability only lasts five seconds, and if you uh, if you overheat recover your time is four seconds, you only get one second of that damage boost, and that's it. I mean, you lose, and then you gotta wait a whole another about a whole minute for the ability to recharge. So be be, be, be careful about your heat, especially when you use the ability. See, you can see me overheating right here. See, and you can just look at that time right there. That's how much time the ability would have been wasted, and you can see it kept me from being able to kill this target right here. So yeah. Watch your heat in this mech. Spe even inside of an assault mech, you should watch it, but on all the other mechs in the game, heat management becomes very, very important. Also, another point I would like to iterate is that this mech, unlike a lot of the other mechs in the game, this mech is actually fairly good inside of the air. It actually moves pretty quickly within the air, but like I said, even though it does move fast in the air, unless you have an air compressor, it's not... You, you're not going to be able to dodge in the air, and so... I mean... Occasional hops inside the Berserker, like to get over somebody's head, that's pretty good. But you know, still try to stay on the ground too. But like I said, Berserker, if you go in the air every now and then, it's not as bad as if you do like inside the other mechs. But the only thing about this is that fuel management becomes all the more important because you do not want to run out of fuel because hovering burns fuel a lot faster than boosting does. And if you run out of fuel inside of a light mech, you're dead because your light mech is no longer fast. And in a, in a light mech that isn't fast is very, very dead. So do not run out of fuel and don't hover for too long because that'll burn through your fuel faster than you can say. Uh, don't run out of fuel. Sorry, I couldn't come up with anything creative. But yeah, we're going to move on to the next clip now. Okay, so we're going to come back to fuel and piloting and all that in a little bit. But right now, I'm going to talk about the prestige weapon. The assault rifle with the alternate weapon that unlocks at rank 3. This is the prestige weapon that unlocks at rank 5. Yes, the mech shredder is back. You get the point D Vulcan on this uh, little... Thing it, on this little mech, it's, and it's really, really good on this mech. But again, the main thing you got to be careful with this mech, 
is that the heat on this thing, you do not have weapons coolant like you do on uh, the assault mech. This thing will just spit out damage, you can use it up close, kind of like the SMC, but just remember you won't have any, you know, you at a long range you're not going to be that effective inside this thing. Now, and again, like using the, the Vulcan, how do you do it here, and especially once you activate your ability, oh gosh, this thing just does an ungodly amount of damage to your enemy, it's just ridiculous. You know, it's really, really great. But what I think, personally, what I think it's best at, because technically the Berserker is inside the Assassin Mech category, and so what I like to do with it most of the time is, like, you know, I try not to, like, attack frontally at all. Like, all this time, like, the main thing I like to do... Actually, an interesting note here is that the original name for the Berserker was called the Flanker, and so that's what I like to do with it. I like to flank with this mech, get behind the enemy or to the side, you see like right here, I, I, I do my best to get behind that uh, heavy, and so and then just attack them from there because it, it is, this gun can really, really do that. Like I said, I can get behind an enemy line while my team's distracting them. I can pop my ability, spin my Vulcan up, and then be just pumping up damage into their rears in, or the or their robots, as some of us say, into their robots, and and just pumping out damage and completely destroy their defensive line in some cases. But again, just uh, going over the weaknesses of this gun is that, remember, it does have that spin-up time, so you have to uh, remember to account for that, and if your finger comes off the mouse for even a split second, you gotta re-spin up the weapon, so... And once you start firing, you're gonna have to commit and just keep on firing, because uh, taking your ma hand off that mouse, is just it, it's not gonna do you much good. And also, remember, like I said, you don't have weapons coolant here, so watch your heat on this thing. Because overheating inside of a light mech could just be just as bad as punishing as running out of fuel. Because a light mech, you can die really, really quickly, and unless you're doing damage or killing your enemy, there's a good chance that you're gonna die. Now, uh, one little small tip though is that as far as heat management goes, and with the Vulcan, and the spin up time, you can kind of use it to your advantage. If you time it right, like right as the three seconds starts, like as soon as you see, uh, pretty much you just count to three, and then as soon as you know your heat's gonna start down, start going down, you just click the mouse, and by the time your Vulcan gets ready to fire, well, most of your heat will have vented away already, and so you can fire it without having to worry about too much heat. You just kind of, it's all in the timing, it's just, you, that just comes with practice. But yeah, and then again, uh, now back to how we're piloting the thing since I, you, the Vulcan's pretty easy. You use it similar to the SMC, except just much more up close and personal, and it's great for surprising, but... Uh, anyways, back to how to pilot this thing and for fuel management. Now, as I said, this thing actually does fairly well in the air, but like I said, I like to stay on the ground mostly. It's a bit more of a playstyle preference, but this mech does do fairly well in the air. Just remember, if you're gonna fly, remember that you're not able to dodge, unless of course you have the air compressor, but even when you do, fuel management becomes crucial. Because like I said, if you run out of fuel, you can't hover anymore, and, it'll, and what's even worse is that you cannot boost away. And what makes mechs, uh, light mechs hard to kill at times, a lot of times, like once any good light mech pilot will know the good time to get the hell out of dodge. Because, you know, you're a light mech, it's not, you can't really hold your ground too well, you're much better at uh, attacking than you are at defending. So, you gotta remember that. Uh, once you reach a certain point, there is a certain point where it is time to run away. Uh, and play much more defensively rather than offensively and trying to chase. The only time I ever really chase people is usually if I'm over half health. If I'm under that, I'd much, I'm, I'd feel it's much safer to just go out and repair at that point. Uh, but yeah, that's just personally how I play. I mean, I've known people who will chase to the death, but you know, they usually end up dead. So, okay, so. Pretty much just going over what I said about the Berserker is it is an assassin mech, so you want to flank and surprise people with it. But you know, it's still it's a very fast mech. You want to keep moving, be able to just, just keep moving and shooting. And it does do well in the air, so you can hover over people. Although, like I said, I usually use my hover more more so as uh, a tactic to like jump over people's heads and mess up their aim more so than just hovering just to get a height advantage for my tow rockets or just for aiming advantage. But yeah, I usually just use a hover either to just, like I said, to do perform a maneuver, or jump over somebody, or if someone's higher up than me, I use it to remove their height advantage. But other than that, I like to keep rooted to the ground. And yeah, uh, pretty much the main things to remember with this is that you are a light mech, uh, you want to try to surprise people, you do flanking whenever possible, and once you take a certain amount of damage, like once you only have like about 100 armor left, that's a good time to just run because you have the speed, you're able to run. So don't feel like you're forced to hold your position because more often than not, that's what'll get you killed inside of a light mech. 
and uh, I'll quickly go over my items and internals. My items, they haven't changed. I still use the shield, the hologram, and then the repair charge. Repair charge is just so damn useful to save your life. And the shield as well. Again, I'll release another video on talking about how that can be really amazing. But even for basic use, it's pretty good. And then the internals are actually, I changed up the setup on most of my mechs. I only use basic deflectors, the uh, evasive device, and then the air compressor. But, you know, I, again, I'll talk more about internals another time. But, uh, but yeah, this is, has been my video for the Berserker. I hope you guys enjoyed, you guys learned something from it. And yeah, that's my introduction to the Light Max. I'll be doing the Vanguard soon. But until next time, this is Soldier Hobbs, signing off.